In this episode, we look at the murder of Dealer Lee McKnight, a honey trap former model who lured the man to his death with booty messages before he was tortured and dumped in a river over a debt by a vicious gang. We take a glimpse of the sordid and dangerous underworld of Carlisle's drug trade. In July, a livestock farmer was doing his morning feeds at 5.30am. He could hear a car in the distance. As he carried on his duties, he then could hear the gate being opened to his field and then the car driving through on the gravel. Securing the farmyard, he warned his wife there could be intruders still in the lambs. He would fire a shot for her if it was and she was then to lock all the doors and call the police. The farmer took his shotgun and rode across the field to the gate. The chain and padlock were broken on the ground and the gate was wide open. But there was no sound of the car. He followed the tire tracks that cut through the field and they led to the bank of the river. The car was long gone, but the farmer noticed in the river a curtain wedged in the curve on the other side of the bank. Moments later, two shots rung out and the farmer's wife frantically phoned the police. Police arrived at the scene. The farmer had found a body. The body was that of a man in his 20s, badly beaten. And the police the next day reported the body was that of Lee McKnight. He had catastrophic injuries to his body, tied up, rolled into a curtain and thrown in the river while he was still alive. He had drowned. The police had put together events through witnesses, though few had come forward. His best friend described to detectives who Lee McKnight was as a person and who wanted him dead. Lee McKnight was an easygoing and friendly, street level drug dealer. The easy money appealed to Lee. He could make more in a week than he could in a month working legit. Drug debts started to accumulate for Lee McKnight. The drugs were given to him. He sells them and he pays the debt after they are sold. He was robbed of his stash by a rival gang. They avoided getting hurt and managed to talk his way out of it. He still owed the money on the gear stolen and he was under the present threat of violence if he failed to settle the debt. But he still carried on in the life, fueled by his desperate need to make that money. Lee McKnight's world was a truly dangerous world, a seedy world inhabited by macho predators willing to use casual and extreme violence to get what they wanted. According to Lee's friend, he simply wasn't the kind of person to foolishly blunder into conflict or behave in a macho way. If trouble came, he would always negotiate his way out of it. He'd never fight. I don't think he's ever been in a fight. Lee McKnight was in debt to a higher level dealer, 26 year old Jamie Davison. Jamie Davison, the middleman, had known Lee McKnight, a fellow drugs peddler, for more than 10 years and had been supplied by him before their roles reversed. Lee McKnight went to ground owing about £2,000 to Jamie Davison, who tried unsuccessfully to make contact before lockdown struck. Jamie Davison was a middleman who peddled cocaine, heroin and cannabis to dealers, lowering the criminal chain, often paying between 18000 and 20000 for up to a half a kilo of cocaine every two weeks. He would then collect the cash from the customers before paying off his suppliers, but was overdue and in July 2020, having been remanded in custody for several days earlier that month, Davison was approaching a July 24th payment deadline. They were just short of £10,000 to upstream crooks, who sent him menacing messages demanding paper before he gets messy. A friend of Lee McKnight was visited by Davison and two scary strangers, one brandishing a baseball bat and the other a large spanner. Evil was the word used by the man whose home they barged into. Increasingly fearful for his safety, Lee McKnight went into hiding. But in the early hours of July 24th, this simmering conflict finally caught up with him and exploded into horrific violence. 
He received flirty messages off his one-time ex, and if he wanted to meet her, he was lured out of hiding to a terraced house in Charles Street, Carlisle, by Carl Edgar, who was 26 years old, who along with her drug-addicted mother, Carol, who was 47, they were regular customers of Lee McKnight's drugs. At 2.40 a.m. on July 24th, moments after Lee walked through the front door, he was attacked. Over the next two hours, he was subjected to horrific violence. A beating so severe, he was left with nine rib fractures, a fractured skull, and 36 injuries on his head alone. Lee was attacked by three men, Davidson, and the two men he recruited as extra muscle. 26-year-old Aaron Graham and his pal, Jamie Lee Roberts, who was just 17 years old. Carl Edgar's mother, Carol, was hopelessly addicted to hard drugs. She let the killers use her Nissan Navara pickup to move Lee at night. Police investigators say the house was covered in blood. As he was being attacked, Lee was probably tied to a chair. It was suggested his injuries were so severe that he looked like a torture victim. Bleeding heavily and unconscious, but still breathing, Lee was utterly helpless after his beating at Charles Street. But rather than getting the medical attention he needed, Lee's torturers chose to dump him. It was a callous and ultimately murderous act. Lee was wrapped in a curtain, bundled into Nissan Navara, and driven to the river near Cummelsdale. Powerless to help himself after being dragged from the Nissan and thrown into the water, Lee had drowned. The aftermath of this tragedy was unseemly. None of the six accused accepted any kind of responsibility. They all blamed each other. Davison said it was Jamie Lee Roberts armed with a knuckle duster who went over the top with the violence. He said it was Roberts Senior who took Lee McKnight to hospital, but instead dumped him in the river. Jamie Lee Roberts, who was 17 at the time of Lee's death, blamed Davison allegedly calling him a psychopath. Aaron Graham insisted he was not at Charles Street when Lee McKnight was attacked and had nothing to do with removing him from the property. Carl Edgar said she was too terrified to intervene when Lee McKnight was attacked and only saw him being punched near the front door. During the violence, Carl, battling with addiction and multiple mental health issues, said she had curled up in a chair with her head buried in her hands. Carol Edgar said she was not at her daughter's home when Lee McKnight was attacked and never gave permission for a Nissan Navara pickup to be used by the attackers. Paul Roberts admitted out with his son, but said he urged other men to get help for Lee McKnight. He said he had tried himself to help Lee McKnight when he saw how seriously injured he was at Charles Street. Sadly, the full truth of exactly how Lee McKnight died and who did what to him will probably never be known. But whatever the truth, what became abundantly clear was the illicit drug trade is an utterly sordid and destructive business. Addicted since she was a teenager, Carl was spending £40 a day on cocaine and £20 on cannabis. She said it was her way of blocking out the painful reality of her day-to-day -day life in the chaotic Carlisle crack den that was her home. Her mother's life was just as grim. Thrown out of her home after a relationship breakdown, Carol's in the grip of even more damaging addiction. The Nissan Navara was dumped in the woodland. It was left to be later recovered, but no one did. Paul Roberts, who was 51 years old, admitted to helping his son, Jamie Lee Roberts, by taking in fresh clothes after the attack and destroying the bloodstained clothes. He also claimed to try and help Lee McKnight when he saw how badly injured he was. At Carlisle Crown Court, the defendants denied murder, but were convicted after a trial lasting several weeks and were jailed for a total of 119 years. The Honourable Mr Justice Hilliard said Davison and Graham both knew that Lee McKnight was alive and they both chose to deliberately drown him. The judge said this was my judgement. It was a murder for gain, and a murder 
intended to obstruct the cause of justice. The judge sentenced all of them to life in prison for their involvement in the murder of Lee McKnight. Carl Edgar was handed a minimum term of 13 and a half years, while Carol Edgar was jailed for at least 13 years. Davison was given the longest sentence with a minimum of 30 years, while Graham, who dumped Lee McKnight into the river, was given 26 years. Jamie Lee Roberts, who was 17 at the time, was jailed for at least 16 and a half years, while Paul Roberts was given 20 and a half years. Carlisle Crown Court heard a heartbreaking statement from Lee's mother, Wendy McKnight. She said, you don't expect your son to be murdered and taken away so soon without being given a chance to say goodbye. We do try and go on about our lives as normally as we can, but underneath our hearts are broken. He was loved by so many, and we were proud to call him our son. The court heard how Jamie Lee Roberts was to be rewarded for helping with the violence by having his drug debts wiped out. Jamie Davison smiled while watching and hearing over a video link as Richard Little, a QC, told the court that Roberts Jr. was recruited as extra muscle. Richard Little, a QC, said, We submit that this young lad, Jamie Lee Roberts, was way, way, way out of his depth. This is a young man who needs help. Caroline Goodwin QC, representing Coral Edgar, said the defendant had found herself in the heart of a perfect storm of circumstances, which left her vulnerable to manipulation. She has recognised mental health issues, a worsening drug addiction, and the imminent threat of eviction. She was herself in a state of shock at what she found herself being involved in. Toby Hedworth QC, defending Carol Edgar, who was 47 years old, Prosecutions say she allowed her Nissan Navara to be used following the savage attack to pick up and transport Liam at night to the river where he was dumped. Gordon Cole QC, representing the oldest of Liam at night's killers, Paul Roberts, said he had only got involved because he was trying to help his son, Jamie Lee Roberts. Mr. Cole said he had no part in any planning and there was no financial gain for him. So the conclusion to this tale. Lee McKnight stepped into Coral Edgar's Charles Street home. He had no idea of the horror that was about to engulf him. Tragically, this was trouble he could not talk his way out of. Like other young men who had strayed into his ugly underworld, Lee McKnight paid for his mistake with his life. His killers showed no emotion as they heard the guilty verdict, but they'll have plenty of time to reflect on their mistakes for they all face years behind bars. But for Lee McKnight's devastated family and friends, the pain will never go away, as they remember how his life was squandered for the sake of £2,000, by thugs who care for nothing, and valued nothing, not his life, and not even their own. <laughs>